Ed here again with the uh, session four of the Subtractor Polyphonic Synthesizer tutorial. Um, last time we looked at filters in, in a general sense as to what a filter is and what it does and the different types of filters available to us uh, or available to be modeled by us. Um, we looked at those on the M-Class equalizer but um, just, just so that we had a graphic representation of what the filter was doing so it's easier to see what's going on. Um, we're now going to look at the actual filters that are available in the subtractor synthesizer. Uh, now if you remember the different types of filters we looked at we had low pass filters, high pass filters, band pass filters and notch filters. Um, if we look at the two low pass filters first uh, there are in, in filter one. Well, okay, in in subtractor there are two filters available to us: filter one and filter two. Filter two is a twelve dB per octave low pass filter. Now, if you remember last time we talked about the slope of the attenuation curve. So, when we select a cutoff frequency, we use this slider here. Now that sets the frequency at which the um, attenuation starts to happen. With a low pass filter, if you remember last, from last time, we allow frequencies below this value that we set here to pass through our filter unhindered. Anything above that frequency is has its gain reduced by an amount which is dictated by the slope of that curve. If you remember the slope we looked at, was maybe 8 dB per octave or, or 12 dB per octave. The two low pass filters available in Subtractor are a 24 dB per octave low pass filter and a 12 dB per octave low pass filter. And all that means really is, is that the 24 is a more aggressive filter. So when we select our cutoff frequency, anything above that frequency is has its volume or gain reduced and it's reduced by a more aggressive amount a steeper curve using the 24 db per octave filter instead of the 12 db per octave filter so we've got our oscillator set up with a straightforward sine wave it's a very clean sine wave it's a single frequency now filters normally are used to take out overtones and harmonics and we'll come on to talk about that later. Uh, but for the purposes of explaining what we've um, got here, we've set the oscillator up with a, a clean sine wave um, to, to, to show what the filter does uh, because it's a lot easier to see what, what, what the filter is doing if we've got a single frequency to deal with. So if I play the note on the oscillator then it's a pure single frequency tone uh, we've got the low pass filter set up at 24 db per octave so I'm going to sweep with this uh, cutoff frequency selector here until we find <clears throat> the frequency at which our note is, is playing and then we'll see what that does so because this is a low pass filter, while the frequency is, is above uh, the frequency of our note, it lets the whole signal through. As we bring that frequency down, we'll reach a point where we find the frequency of the note we're playing, which is around there. And you'll hear that that, that note, which is, which is above the frequency of, that we've, we're setting here on, on our filter frequency, so the note we're playing is is above the cutoff frequency that we're setting. And so because we've got a low pass filter, that's now being filtered out. And as we reduce that further, you can hear that that tails off to nothing. So our filter is now taking out all of the note that we're playing because we've set the filter frequency to be below the frequencies of our note. Um, and because we've got quite an aggressive filter, it's 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 cut out pretty much all of that note. If we then leave the frequency 
set at that location there, but change now from the low pass 24 to the low pass 12, 12 dB per octave. That's a less aggressive filter, so you will hear that there is more signal allowed through. So the filter frequency is still set the same, but the LP24 takes out more than the LP12 does. And then again, if we move that frequency up, thereby allowing the note that we're playing on the keyboard to be below the frequency of the filter, the cutoff frequency of the filter, then the low pass filter will allow that note to pass through because its frequency will be below the trigger frequency. So the, 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 the entire signal is allowed to come through there. And as we reduce that, the signal gets filtered out. Turning now to the high pass filter. <clears throat> Again, it's a 12 dB per octave filter. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so this time, conversely, the, the filter is, is set to allow frequencies above the frequency with, that we set our filter at through. So we've set that at a low frequency now, so the, the note that we're playing is allowed through because it's above the filter frequency. If we slide the fre filter frequency up, we will get to a point where the note we're playing is below the, the cutoff frequency and therefore gets filtered out, which is again about that point there. Okay. Turning now to the, the bandpass filter, the filter will now operate uh, on frequencies below or above um, the band that we've chosen. So if we choose the band at the frequency of our note, about here, then it's allowing the full signal through. If we choose a frequency for our filter above the note we're playing, then it gets filtered out. And again, below the note that we're playing, it gets filtered out because we're only allowing a band in the middle through. So if we set that through, uh, if, if you look, this, this is octave four, which is mid range. <clears throat> so the filter is set at the mid range and it's allowing the full signal through. Up here, it cuts it out. Down here, it cuts it out. At this frequency, it allows everything to pass. Conversely, the notch filter is, is the inverse of that. That allows everything to pass when we're up here. Everything to pass when we're at this frequency here. But when we're at the frequency of our note, the notch kicks in. So the frequency of our note is there. It's quite a narrow notch and it cuts out those frequencies there. So that's how a notch filter works. Resonance will we'll come on, um, well, well, we'll look at that now actually. Resonance will, if you remember, put a peak on a set range of frequencies. So the the set range of frequencies that we're allowing our filter to, or our filter is allowing to pass through, is is at the frequency of our note. If we apply resonance, then that gives a boost to that to that gain and allows it to to resonate at that frequency. change to a low pass filter without resonance we've got that gain there as we increase the resonance you can hear that there's a boost given and if you remember when we were looking at it on the equalizer that that corresponded with a peak in in the um, curve so the resonance in increases the intensity of the sound at that particular frequency that we're looking at on our, on our filter. This knob here allows um, 
this frequency value to change with the note that we're playing on the keyboard. So as we move up and down the keyboard, the frequency will, will change. And you might think that's a bit of a strange thing to do, but if you remember, the, the, the filters are really for taking out um, overtones and, and harmonics rather than what we've been looking at just for demonstration purposes, the actual note itself. Um, so there are situations when you want the filter cutoff frequency to rise and fall with the note itself. And the amount to which that does that is controlled by this knob here. So that's what how how the filter is set up. You'll notice it's a it's it's a fairly simplistic form of filter compared with what we were looking at last time with the equalizer. But that's just a it goes to show that although things may be simplified, I mean in 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 Reason Six there are other synthesizers available, and and you, you know you can do more complex things. Um, but in reality, although this is a simplified version of a filter even in reason essentials we still do have access to the m class equalizer if we want to have something more sophisticated so we can model a filter using the m class equalizer if if this filter if we decide i mean for most purposes it's it's fine but if if we want a bit, something a bit more sophisticated we can actually model them using other uh, devices within reason essentials filter 2 just quickly is Exactly the same, except that it's limited to a low pass 12 dB per octave filter. Uh, and we can link the two, so the offset of this frequency can be linked to this um, so that we can, can have, have more control over it using this switch here. Filter 2 can either be on or off using this switch here. Um, and again, frequency and resonance are exactly the same as frequency and resonance on, on um, filter one. The only difference really is that we, we can only have this operating as a low pass 12 dB per octave filter. Okay, those are the filters. Next time we'll quickly talk about the filter envelope and then we'll start looking at another uh, form of subtraction synthesis techniques which are... Um, looking at phase interference of, of the frequencies in the oscillator. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.